Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is Mikael. This is um, Adam. And my name is Yachanan Maccabeus. First, we want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Today's lesson is Arise, ye daughters that are at ease. Rebuke on feminism. That's right. Yeah, today, um, in these days, we know that there's a serious problem in our um, communities between um, the relationship between the men and the women. And the problem is um, feminism, where it gives the, where it says that the woman is equal and even um, greater than the man, and that um, she doesn't need the man no more, and that she can um, wander around and do whatever she wants to do, which is um, totally out of order against the Bible. So in this lesson, we're going to bring out some passages and um, information to show that um, feminism is hurting you, it's hurting our sisters. And uh, hopefully there's some lesson, the information we'll bring out can um, bring some of you that are following, going that way to repentance. That's right. So you can be uh, made fit or right for the kingdom. That's right. Um, from there, as always, we like to lead uh, with the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, and it reads, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Today we're going to bring out the truth about feminism, how it's um, destroying our sisters, destroying our families, and show that what the scripture says is remedy to empower our sisters in a righteous way, not um, the way that um, Esau and our oppressors um, have you believe is power. Real power is of being a virtuous woman according to Proverbs 31. That's right. Next we've got um, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. The book of Isaiah chapter 28. Uh, verse 10 for precept must be upon precept for precept must be upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little uh, so we're going to let the Bob do the talking for us because the scripture said the mouth of two or three witnesses show every matter be established so um, the, whole, the Bible from the 66 books to the Apocrypha all connects That's right. so we're going to go through these scriptures and bring out the edification to you From there, we're going to uh, deal with one of the curses uh, that's affecting our community in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 56. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 56. And it reads, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Con. So our women used to be tender and delicate once upon a time. You could have carried them, pick them up. They was um, gentle. They didn't um, use four letter words. They didn't um, mark their bodies up with um, tattoos or have piercings all over their place. Our women used to be tender and delicate. Start Start getting from the top of that passage. Deuteronomy 28, 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot on the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. Consul, these are the curses that um, we're going through today where the woman is... Uh, <coughs> evil towards her husband and towards her kids. She'll um, kick the man out the house so she can get um, benefits from Uncle Sam and um, pimp her kids by allowing, allowing them to put on um, attention deficit or disorder or some kind of disability so she can get a check. Yeah, a special education. Buying the Christmas presents which and celebrating birthdays because she hates them going against um, what a righteous man would tell her to do. Okay. From there, we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 7. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 17, Salakia. Likewise, ye son of man, set thy face against thy daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. 
Now we know that women that um, don't follow the word, they usually go by what their feelings and opinions are, prophesying their own words instead of going by what the Most High says. And we know that um, in Jeremiah 17 says that the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. So when we prophesy, it needs to be, come out of the scriptures. Thus says Yahweh. Or are they speaking of what they female pastor has spoken to them because feminism has even took place within the church. You know, the woman has taken her stance in the pulpit whereas though she has no right to proclaim those things. And she is out of order. Uh, she thinks that she should leave the household because Esau and told her she's the head of the household and if she kicks the strong man out of the household, she will get everything that she can from our government. Ah, uh, yeah, the church is one of the headquarters of feminists where they um, teach the woman that she don't have to listen to the man, she just has to bring her tithes to the pastor, which is totally out of order. That's right, they go in there and they give the, uh, the pastor the money and he gives them, or she gives them, no rebuke. And it has turned into literally a whorehouse. Yeah, the Bible is from Genesis to um, Revelation is full of rebuke of um, the wicked woman. But um, in church, you never hear them bring out any of the patches, patches at all. They'll um, go against a man saying the man ain't, ain't Jack and um, he's weak and he's lazy, but they won't um, rebuke the woman at all. Okay. Now, that's why men don't go to church today, because uh, we're tired of getting um, thrown under the bus. We're tired of getting dis disrespect. Church is irrelevant. From there, we're going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 18. Now, pay attention to this. This is the definition of a woman, these passages are, and um, what her role is, and what she's supposed to contribute to society. So, pay attention to this. The book is Genesis, chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord, by God, and the Lord, and the Lord Yahweh, said it is not good that man should be alone i will make him a help me for him uh equal partner i will make him a help me for him okay so um this is why women was created to uh, help the man that's why the scriptures say that man was created first and then woman there's a reason because of that i don't see no equality there let's go to sirach 36 24 to expound on it more Book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. So it's saying the same thing in Sirach um, 36 as it is in um, Genesis 2 18, that you're supposed to be a help. So if you're not helping um, and supporting your husband, you're not a woman at all, according to the Bible. Then. You're just a female. Not a, there's a difference between a female and a woman. Let alone that, you're supposed to be his pillow of rest. And some of you women, you got the nerve to think that a man is supposed to want to put up with your mouth. You got the nerve to think after a man done worked all day and some of y'all living lively, sitting at home doing nothing, that he should come home after dealing with our oppressors and deal with your mouth as well. That's totally out of order as well. He's supposed to be his pillar of rest. Right, you wouldn't dare um, talk to your boss or your co-workers at work like that when they uh, do something that's off to you, but um, at, at your husband, you'll um, unleash the fury uh, and act like a dragon like um, Aki Uriel said in his previous video. Can sitting there barking on your husband with all type of hyper-masculinity. Yeah, this, this is simple to understand. Yeah. Not, not hard at all. Trying to emasculate y y your male counterpart, y your head. You're covering. You try to be covered. Right, you're supposed to be tender and delicate, not um, mass masculine. From there, oh, verse 25. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. And he that have no wife will wander up and down mourning. Uh, so as, as, as men, we're supposed to put a hedge and set boundaries for our women to follow. Those that are willing to uh, submit to their husbands. Okay. So a real submissive women will um, honor the hedges and boundaries that her man will um, set up for her. Not okay. a wicked um, Jezebel type woman. 
From there, we're going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22 through 25. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, 22 through 25. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. God. So would you uh, fuss at the Most High God, Yahweh, like you um, fuss and cuss out on your husband? Read that again, verse 22, I think they got it. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands, as unto the Lord. As unto Yahweh. Submit yourselves to your husbands, as you do to Yahweh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In a few things. In everything. Everything. In everything. Wait, give me a second. Let me look up everything um, to make sure it means what I think it means. I'm not the <laughs> smartest person. Let me... Um, Give me a second, Ephesians 5, 22 to 25, everything. Give me a second. Okay, everything is um, strong. G3956, let's see what it means. The Greek word is uh, pass. So it says um, individually, each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, everything. So I, so I believe to me it's all things. I, I believe that's the understanding I just got from it. Thus says, um, this is the word of God. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Okay, and I'm also living in this Western culture. We uh, think that love is some kind of emotional, warm feel. But love is um, an action, according to the Bible. Love means to respect. So That's you right. need to respect your husbands. That's right. As you do them the most high. But the same respect to the husband, because he's um, your master. He's your Lord. Let me bring out 1 Peter 3, 6 also to spell on that real quick. <coughs> by um, the example that um, Sarah and Abraham um, set for us. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 6 whereby the world that then was being overflowed or Salakia. Um, oh my bad. Salakia, my bad. It started verse 5 also. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 5 for after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Man, I'm, I miss them old days. We don't got that today. Verse 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So women, you can't call yourselves a daughter of Sarah if you don't um, call your, your husband a master. That's right. So you're supposed to follow um, Sarah's righteous example. That's right, and your husband is the lord of your household. Uh, if it's a righteous man, he's gonna tell you what's best for, you, for the household anyway. He's not gonna lead you astray because he is your covering and he's gonna be following after the will of Yahweh Shai. Huh. You know, so there's no reason not for you to be following behind a righteous man. And I also want to say you got to be careful um, choosing the men that you pick as partners. Um, you got to look at the man, not if, who's going to bring you the most excitement, because I know women love excitement. And um, <coughs> you really need to look at a man for a man that's um, stable, someone that um, you're willing to submit to. Not because he don't care whether or not uh, he's smoking marijuana or turning up every night. Turn on to these scriptures right here. 
That's the man that you're supposed to be uh, hindering yourself to right there. Yeah, you're not supposed to be um, jumping from partners to partners. I know this society tells you to, um, while you're young, in the best years of your prime, to um, have fun and mess with the baddest boys and the thugs and the gangsters out there. Then when you get older, before you hit the wall to um, settle for beta male, but you're supposed to um, look for a stable um, man to settle down with and um, bear kids at, um, at your best years. That's right. Nobody wants to be uh, the husband to a jump off. Right. Or a cleanup man. Uh, having to take you and your five kids along. And we got to quit being a cleanup man and um, giving these, um, saving these ladies also. Okay. Let's go to Genesis 316 also. That's an important passage. The book of Genesis. Chapter 3. Verse 16. Un unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. God so says, In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. So it's a commandment to um, bear children when you get pregnant. You, you can't. Um, run to the clinic and um, get them murdered there. So that's breaking the command right there. And your desire is supposed to be um, to your husband. So um, whatever his, your husband, man's um, desires and goals are, you're supposed to help us support them. Okay, you shouldn't even be running to the, to the clinic and taking birth control. This stuff was designed to sterilize you when the Most High had already told you to be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, Genesis 9, 7, let's uh, The book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 7. And ye be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Yeah, Which, so, go ahead. So it's supposed to be a blessing for you ladies um, to conceive because some ladies out there um, can't conceive. And right here, we're supposed to be nation building. We're supposed to be nation building. The deadliest place. For, for a child right now is within the black woman or Hispanic woman's womb. Planned Parenthood is in all of our neighborhoods and it's killing more than a pistol is killing. Huh. I don't know, I never hear, um, see Black Not Lives Matter uh, marching against abortion claims or Planned Parenthood at all. Because Black Lives Matter is the feminist movement and the LGBTQ movement, that's why. <laughs> it, it was, it, it's funded by George Soros and uh, three feminist females and a homosexual. That's why. They worry more about uh, a woman's struggle than uh, the so-called black and Hispanic struggle. Like you're supposed to be worried about. So, so you're following women then, um, being under the leadership of a woman if you're associated with Black Lives Matter. Let, let alone that, you're worried about going to the clinic and so forth and getting birth control so you don't have children and why you can be promiscuous yeah. and Birth control was brought about, uh, particularly tested on uh, our so-called Puerto Rican family, the tribe of Ephraim, uh, by Margaret Sanger. And she was a part of a program called Plan Eugenics, which was used to exterminate us. <coughs> huh. She called us undesirables. So you're taking pills uh, from people who said that the children of your womb is undesirable. And we got some heavy, serious information we're going to bring out too, showing how um, women being promiscuous, they're destroying their own souls. Okay. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up shortly. From there, we're going to go uh, to the book of 2 Chronicles. Or 2 Kings. Sorry, Slakia. The book of 2 Kings. Second Kings chapter 11. The book of Second Kings chapter 11. The book of Second Kings chapter 11. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royale. Alright, so who was um, Athaliah? This is um, 
Her name, um, according to the Strong's entry, is age 6271. Her name means Afflicted of Yahweh. And she is um, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, and the wife of King Jehoram of Judah. So um, everybody knows um, Jezebel, one of the most um, wicked women in Israel. We know, we know that Jezebel's not an Israelite, so don't trip on me. But she's one of the most um, wicked women in Israel. And she was so, um, at, at the Lia was the daughter of Jezebel. It says, killer of all the members of the royal family of Judah, with the exception of one baby named Joash. So that's the background of um, who Athelia is as we uh, go into this chapter. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, Ahaz 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 saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royale. And let me bring out something else. Um, she was so wicked that um, her son ruled only one year from Judah before the Most High brought judgment unto him. But she didn't um, properly raise her son or her um, family up. And after her son died, she was so wicked she um, destroyed all of his um, sons and descendants also so that she could take the throne. <coughs> And that's what our ladies are doing today. They're um, committing abortion, destroying their seed. Because the woman's role is to um, preserve the genetics and name of her, of her husband. And carry, so they can carry on her husband's legacy. And she uh, destroyed her husband's legacy. Or tried to. Uh, give me Proverbs 14.1 real quick. Yes, yeah, so a woman, that's your um, part of lot in life. Um, when you get um, married to a man to um, preserve your husband's legacy and genetics. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse one. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Because if you're not um, building up your, um, your, your man's house, you're foolish according to the Bible. That's right. So if you run uh, Planned Parenthood and you're getting abortions, you're foolish. All right, so let's um, deal with this um, Planned Parenthood talk. talk. Let's um, go to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 17. The book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 17. <clears throat> We're starting at 16. <clears throat> Slock it. These six things doth the Lord hate. Ye seven are an abomination unto him. Okay. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. And abortion is the shedding of innocent blood. That's right. Not even giving these um precious babies a chance to come out the world and uh, make a name for themselves. Let me um, bring out this um, article from this flyer we um, type out. Um, abortion is the murder, murdering of innocent babies. Okay. It says, um, in the United States, society doesn't consider the unborn in the mother's womb to be a living being until they are at least 25 weeks old. A mother can legally terminate, but for a better to be murdered. She, a mother can legally murder her baby up to 24 of the 37 weeks that it takes a baby to fully develop. Jeremiah 1 5 says, according to the Most High, according to Bob's lock here, the Most High considers the unborn as a person, and he is involved in the creating and developing of the being from the beginning. Jeremiah 1 5 says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So you're, so you're accountable for that. Um, fetus that you that you terminate. You're, the Most High is going to hold you accountable for it. Let me read Jeremiah 1.5 again. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So at judgment time, when you have to face the Most High, because we all going to have to face the Most High in judgment, he's going to ask what happened to that um, baby that was in your womb. Okay. Next we want to go to um, Psalms 106.37-38. Book of Psalms, 
chapter 106, verse 37 and 38. Ye they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Conan. And the land was polluted with blood. Conan and our um, communities are um, polluted with blood all over this um, all over this damn country of abortion clinics in every black and Hispanic community. I want to read 39. All right, so go ahead. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. So because you want to go out there and go a whoring, you decide that you want to go get abortions, you want to take birth control, just so you can be promiscuous. Because Esau will give you the liberty to do this with this feminist movement. It's my body. No man has the right to tell me what to do with my body. No, the most high is telling you what to do with your body. Yeah, take your time and get to know somebody. Quit um, having these one night stands or um, going to the bathroom since so you meet them, um, Ray Ray or JoJo. You gotta take time to get to know a person, see if um, this is someone that uh, has, has a sound mind. Is he about something? Some of y'all so simple that y'all will stand up and pee over a toilet seat and won't put your bottom on it, but you'll meet a man to have a one night stand with it. Don't, don't make no sense. That's simple. But it's your body, you're gonna do what you want to do with it. Let me bring this up, uh, fact out also. It says, um, abortion is far the, by far the biggest cause of death in the black community since Roe versus Wade was passed in 1973. And I believe um, since Roe versus Wade in 1973 to now, there's at least over 15 to 17 uh, million black babies that have been uh, murdered. Israelite babies, okay. kings and priests, and um, daughters of Sarah. The nation of Israel being destroyed right there in the black Hispanic woman's womb. How you know one of these babies that's in your womb ain't one of our future leaders? That, that Satan have you destroyed? Because you want to go astray. Because you led away by your own inventions. That's what the Most High said. Because you want to be horrid. Yeah, gotta repent, gotta repent. Next, back to um, 2 Kings chapter 11. The book of 2 Kings chapter 11. Verse 2. Verse 2. But Joshua, the daughter of King Joram, sister of, Ahaz of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. You see how wicked this grandma was? They had to hide her own grandbaby from her so she wouldn't kill him. Wicked. Um, that's why um, Queen is not um, Israelite called. She's the only righteous queen the Bible speaks of is um, Queen Esther, but she was queen of the, in the Medan Persian Empire. Queen's not an uh, Israelite. Um, it's not part of Israelite culture. Verse four. In the seventh year of Yohaida, sent the sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard, and brought them to him into the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, this is the thing that ye should do. All, a third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. And a third part shall be at the gate of Sir. And a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house that it be not broken down and two parts of all that go forth on the Shabbat, even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And ye shall compass the king round about every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within the reins, let him be slain. 
and be the king as he goeth out and as he cometh in. <coughs> Verse 9. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all things that Yohaida the priest commanded. And they took every man, his men that were to come in all the Shabbat with that with them that should go out on the Shabbat and came to Yehoiada the priest. And Khan, um, that's what we're doing today, men of the Lord. We're um, using our weapons, which is spiritual weapons, to um, prepare for King Yahweh to come back. That's right. To come back and do away with um, feminism and all this wickedness in this world. That's right. Joash um, is a shadow picture of the Messiah. Verse 10. And to the captains over hundreds did the priests give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple along by the altar and the temple. So like, let me bring out um, Ephesians chapter 6 real quick show you what our weapons are. Ephesians chapter... Um, 6 verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against power against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high place wherefore take unto you the whole armor of elohim that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Faith is um, believing in, in the Bible and um, following. Believing that the scriptures is the word of God. So shield of faith, wherefore, we should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We um, deflect the fiery darts by um, bringing out the scriptures and cutting them. With and take the helmet of salvation, which is the Messiah, Yahweh Shah. He's our head. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So this is our weapons that we're using to um, cut the fight back against the evil in this world. It's okay. a spiritual war we're in. Okay. <clears throat> the book of 2 Kings, chapter 11, verse 10. And the captains, over hundreds, did the priests give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood every man with his weapons in his hands around about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony and they made him king and anointed him and they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. Okay, so they gave him the law. The law of, which is um, the books of Moses to go by. That's how you restore um, righteousness in, in our neighborhoods by um, giving the people the law. That's right. Cry aloud and spare none. Verse 13. And when Athalia heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people and to the temple of the Lord. God, we know that feminists hate the men of the Lord. They hate them being submissive and subjected to a man of the Lord. So uh, she's doing what um, feminists today are doing. She's uh, crying and causing commotion when she comes upon the presence, presence of a man of God. Okay. Verse 14. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manor was and the princes and the trumpeters by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athalia rent her clothes and cried, treason, treason. Verse 15, but Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, have her forth without the ranges. And him that followed her, kill with the sword. Wait, wait, do what to her? Kill with the sword. For the priest had said, let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. And they, they laid hands on her, and she went by the way by which the horses came into the king's house, and there was she slain. Constant when um, Yahweh Shai, our king, comes back to restore order, order on this earth, you feminists, 
that um, hate the word of the Most High, you hate the men of the Lord, you're going to be put to death too. You got to, the Most High got to eliminate you so you can um, establish righteousness in this king. Okay. Verse 17. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people between the king also and the people. And that's a shout out picture of um, our people when um, it's time for this, for the new king to be established. We've got to make a covenant with the Most High upon going onto the land. Verse 18. And all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down, his altars and his images, break they in pieces thoroughly, and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priests appointed officers over the house of Yahweh. Constant, all you leaders and pastors that um, push and promote feminism, you got to be um, put to death also. So you need to repent while you have the chance. Y'all pu pushing the abor abortion rights, you're going to have the sword. Yeah, you're destroying families. And we know that Galatians 6 says that um, the Most High is not mocked whatever man sows. That shit we also read. So all you false prophets out there, that's some empowering feminism and um, destroying the men and the homes. You're going to judge, you're going to face judgment also. The proof is in the pudding that you're destroying the, the black and Hispanic family because before all of this, before we started going along with the feminist movement, the black and Hispanic family had abundant families. If you go back and look, you probably got like five to six aunts and uncles. But nowadays you can only have one or two children because it's pushed so much and it pushes promiscuity so much instead of the leadership of the man. That's how the feminist movement is destroying the black and Hispanic family, the Israelite family. And also love feminism for most of them. Women have multiple partners. You can see a lot of women today now because of feminism have like three or four or five baby daddies, which is totally out of order. You're gonna, a woman's controlling four or five men where you control their resources by having men have to pay tribute to you and you determine when they can come see their child and when they can. But it's okay for you to have uh, three or four baby daddies, but it's not okay the righteous way for a righteous man to have more than one husband. Y'all foolish. Yeah, all you people speaking out um, against polygyny, why don't you speak out against these women that got four or five or even two or three baby daddies. That's totally out of order. Okay. Now we not we not we not going up against you righteous women who got uh more than one uh baby daddy because we know sometimes we can be idiots too. We know that we can be idiots. We talking to you women who just laying there and you got all your legs open to Tom Dick and Harry. That's who we talking to. And also I forgot I want to bring out this testimony against them. Um, After lie also there's another one charge against her. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 7. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, so the Bible calls her a wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also the dedicated things of the house of the Lord that they bestow upon Balaam. So she um, encouraged her kids to be wicked. So you do not want to be an Athaliah at, at all, a feminist. Okay. Verse 19, and he took the rulers over hundreds and the captains and the guard and all the people of the land and they brought down the king from the house of the Lord and came by the way of the gate of the guard to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings. Verse 20, and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was in quiet and they slew of Athaliah with the sword beside the king's house. I like that. So they said when um, the king came, established order in the kingdom and got rid of the female ruler and did away with feminism, the people rejoiced. That's right. And we need to rejoice in abundance. So Y'all need to get rid of that feminist movement. Athaliah represents the feminist movement. Yes. Get rid of your babies so that you can have rulership over your house so that the men can't be established as king. Wake up, Israel! Let me bring out on Proverbs 29 2 real quick. Proverbs 29 2. It says, when the righteousness, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And because of feminism, a lot of people are um, down and down out and depressed. 
looking at this, trying to operate in this cane. <clears throat> that feminist movement in itself is, is, is foolishness. It's foolishness. This was brought about because uh, Susan B. Anthony felt as though she was being oppressed by uh, the leader of, of her nation, which was the white man. It has nothing to do with you, black woman. The black man ain't in no position to oppress you. Your struggle is, is equated as our struggle. We both had the same oppressor. And there's statistics saying that, uh, of course, statistics, Lockett saying that uh, as much as 60% of uh, babies in our, in our community are uh, raised in houses with single mothers. They ain't pushing that independent woman uh, thing in, in their communities. They like to tell you they are, but they not. They not pushing the horses in their community. Planned Parenthood set up in all of your communities. All the clinics are set up in your communities. They say they pro LGBT, but they're not pushing that in their communities. They're pushing that in your community. And they're only pushing it with the lower class amongst them. They're not pushing it up there. You think the top 1% is pushing that? No, they're pushing the royal bloodline. They make your husband and wives. They are putting a man, a man, a man over top of them. We have the most racist president in history and over 85% of white females voted for him. But yet they're trying to put you against your man. You have to be ashamed to be a black feminist. And a lot of you guys are lonely and miserable. Not having a man to have your back. Just being, just being used up like a... Being used by design. Right. Going from man to man instead of having stability. You need stability. That's right. Next we're gonna deal with them the Harley. That's one of the biggest problems in the feminism uh, promoting harlotry and whore money. The Book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 8 through 12. The Book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes, uh, for some of you, Ecclesiasticus, for some of you, had the Apocrypha that doesn't have the Hebrew translation. Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 8. A drunken woman and a gather abroad, abroad cause great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. A drunken woman and a gather abroad cause of great anger. You got a quick one to the clubs and getting turned up and then um, find yourselves in Jerome's bed one night and then Tyrone's the next night. The Bible says to be sober-minded. Not covering your own shame, that means not sitting there drinking 25 shots of Patron. That's foolishness, you trying to get alcohol poisoning? What you trying to prove? That you the most stupidest woman in the club? That's foolishness. No man can tell me what to do I'm saying drink 25 shots of Patron. But then you had enough to claim some man raped you or something because you were stupid drunk. But you put yourself in that position to be in that position. That's foolishness altogether. Yeah, you're acting like a female, not a woman. A real woman um, doesn't carry herself like that. You got your, you got yourself all exposed with spandex that I can see your skin through? That's an undergarment in the first place. What you doing? Why do you want to be hyper-masculine with some jeans on yourself? That feminist movement, that feminist movement got you in the pants. Go back and look at your grandparents uh, in their school pictures, or even your mother in their school pictures. They wasn't wearing no, no pants, they was all wearing dresses. When you get married, you get married in a dress. That shows you who garment it belonged to. Hello, wake up. Some of y'all got the nerve to go back and forth on a, a social media about it in the first place. Y'all got some nerve to go back and forth. Come on, man. Esau put the pants on his woman. So now you want to wear, you want to go behind Esau's woman and wear the pants? That's foolishness. Come on now. When somebody's leaving in a household, they say the man wears the pants in the household. How foolish is that? Y'all need to wake up. And you got shows like the Housewives of Atlanta, Housewives of Jersey, wherever the hell they are in it. And it uh, puts the women as the head of the house, so like, the parents had to, had to get the way they elevate the women over the man. Let alone that, come on now. You, you know a woman ain't even supposed to wear a war garment. The men wore the pants under the war garment so that when they was running and they had uh, they gird on them, that they, that they man parts wasn't flopping everywhere for everybody to see. So if a woman ain't supposed to put on a war, war garment, what is a woman doing with pants on? 
Hey, take it up to um, verse 6 for me real quick. <coughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 6. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. Place so of grief and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. Grief and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman and a scourge of the tongue which communicated with all. Now come on now, why is there a time I jump on YouTube and I see the recommendation um, column two black females going at it in the hood? I'm tired of that, aren't you guys? Taking your shirts off like you some dudes and scrapping. That's the foolishness. You, you, you got your breasts flopping everywhere and you got your shirt off like you some dudes scrapping. What type of masculinity, hyper-masculinity is that? You're a female, not a, not a woman. There's a difference between a woman and a female. Cat, you out of order. You out of place. I, I haven't seen videos of women beating up on men nowadays, too. They, they pounded the hell out of them. Who woman in the right man mind that's 100 pounds, 125 pounds, gonna try to punch a dude that's 300 pounds No, he can knock your teeth down your throat or put your chin in the back of your neck? You foolish! But yet a woman ain't supposed to hit a man. You ain't supposed to give no man no reason to hit you. Exactly. Yeah, the woman today is not tender and delicate. Think you equal. You can't equate that much weight. You can't equate a man 300 pounds ready to knock you in the three weeks from now. You think you equitable for that? That's foolishness. Yeah, you should be able to take what you can give, but we know that um, this uh, matriarchal society is going to arrest a man no matter what. Because um, a man got no head to um, to put a woman in check. A righteous woman is supposed to want to be held accountable by her man. Okay. But you feminists um, say that's, um, that's out of order. An evil woman is a yoke shaking to and fro. He that have hold on her is as though he held a scorpion. A drunken woman and a yatter abroad cause a great anger and she will not cover her own shame. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and her eyelids. So if a man sitting there trying to tell you right to something, you sitting there rolling in your eyes, you a horse woman by your look, by the look of your eyes. Huh. If thy daughter be shameless, Keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. So where's the fathers at to guard their daughters? Or the mother! The mo let's go to Titus, let's go to Titus chapter 2. Cause we done dealt with the woman, I did a previous video, it's called, uh, if a man does not take care of his own, he's worse than the infidel. So we addressing the women today, we not attacking you, but we already went in on the men, so we going in on the women today. And we went on the men first. Alright, Titus chapter 2 verse 3. It says, the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. <clears throat> teachers of good things. That's what women are supposed to do to the other woman. So if the woman, if the, if the younger woman looking at you, she gonna pick up at, you, up at you doing good things or she gonna pick up at you doing the bad things. Right, so mothers, are you a Titus 2 woman or are you an Ezekiel 1644 woman? Mm, let's bring that up. That's all I like about the scriptures, it brings out the good and the bad. Plenty of, plenty of examples. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44, 45. Yeah, forgot to write the Ezekiel 16. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 44. Behold, every then, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. And that, that, that's not a good thing either, unfortunately, in this context. Verse 45, Thou art thy mother's daughter that loatheth her husband and her children. Loatheth, Salakia, loatheth is the old, old English word for hateth. So it says, Thou art thy mother's daughter that hateth her husband and her children. <coughs> And when you kick the dad out of the house, you hate the children then, because um, the children don't got that um, 
strong, sturdy structure to God. Thou art thy mother's daughter that loveth her husband and her children, and thou art the sister of thy sister, which loveth their husbands and their children. Huh. Yeah, so you hate your kids when you kick your cousin husband out the house, especially a righteous man. Kind. Stop, you, stop them from being the head of the household. Right. But that's the righteous order that the Most High said, and the Most High is not with you if you do that. Trust in the Lord God with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. Back to on Sirach 26. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 12. Okay, let's look. She, she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he have found a fountain, when she had found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. And he, you know what that is. That's right, she's gonna promote promiscuity of herself. And you're destroying yourselves on being heartless and um, whores. Let me um, bring out this article about um, about um, what happens to a um, female um, when she has multiple partners when she's promiscuous. This is real heavy information, so pay attention closely. This article is called, We Carry Live DNA from All Sperm Ever Touched. Did you know women absorb and carry living DNA cells from every male that they have ever had sexual intercourse with? In fact, anyone who has assumed male spermatosa into their bodily system has the living cells and genetic, and genetic imprint signature of each individual whose sperm they have consumed in, or received in any way. So if you want um, to mess with two or three guys, you got a, two or three guys spared in you. Can, and they quarreling with each other. Right. That's why a lot of you women is bipolar. Schizophrenic, you putting these different DNAs in your body. You taking a spirit on yourself. Yeah, women back in the day, they didn't have um, four or five partners. They was getting married um, in their late to early teens and having families. And you, you putting all these unrighteous men's DNA on top of you like that because they're not taking you to wife. So you allow a whole bunch of unrighteousness to dwell inside of you. And you gotta wrestle with that. Exactly. Don't have sex with anyone who you wouldn't want to be with. This advice that followed would transform the energy on earth from war, hatred, and strife to that of love, peace, and concord. So the world would be a lot better place um, if you wasn't uh, being promiscuous with. You're, you're destroying yourselves on um, doing this. This phenomenon is called male microchimerism. Male microchimerism. Microchimerism is the arboring of small number of cells that originated in a genetically different individual. But when they autopsied the brains of women who had never been pregnant, they still found male DNA prevalent in the female brain. Okay. So these uh, women um, were, were never pregnant, but they weren't virgins either. So this is um, evidence that um, apart from a male spirit or DNA um, stays in you when you have intercourse with it. This has a very important ramifications for women, especially promiscuous women who practice unprotected sexual intercourse. Every male you absorb spermatosa from becomes a living part of you for life. The woman autopsy in this study were elderly. Some had carried the living male DNA for well over 50 years. This will certainly piss the feminists off, but explain so much about woman, life, and relationships. <laughs> That's why we wonder why, why are women so crazy nowadays? Why are they so out of order? Why are they so rebellious? This is the reason. Sperm is alive, it is living cells. When it is injected into you, it swims and attaches and burrows into your flesh. If it's in your mouth, it swims and climbs into your nasal passages, into inner ear and behind your eyes, then digs in. 
it enters your bloodstream and collects in your brain and spine like something out of a sci-fi movie. Sheesh. I love how the agenda has convinced young ladies to be promiscuous. They not only are sabotaging generations of young women, of course they are. The male DNA can also pass into and become part of a fetus from an entirely different male. Check this out. So if your woman has a long track record, then your kids are likely carrying DNA from her past hookups. Wow. That's deep. That that is deep. In the Bible is a book of science too, um when reading the Torah that when um, Israel went and conquered other nations, they had to kill all the men and the children and the women that um, had husbands and only preserved the virgins. Yeah. Because they had to understand the science that um the, if a woman um that's a woman that the male um, DNA stays in her for life. So that's why they only brought the Virgins back from war, men, women that had been touched by men. So they wouldn't um, have that craziness or the spirit of the man from the enemy nations um, destroying um, their nation. Okay. So we're supposed to marry a um, virgin, pure one. I said um, the prize in America is um, getting harlots for wives like um, Kim Kardashian, Black China, Amber Rose. That's the that's the prize of this society, which is totally out of order. Cardi B, you want, Cardi you want B, to model right. your wife at the Cardi B and Amber Rose, Amber Rose talking about some no, sh no slut shaming, the, another part of the feminist movement, so you can go out and be promiscuous and not be a sling, ashamed to be a slut. Y'all women out your mom. Yeah, we're supposed to be kings and priests, brothers. We, we deserve better than uh, what the society's offering us. And if you ain't with it, if you a man that you ain't with it, you's a fool too. You a fool. Sirach 23 or 26, 23. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So if you trust in the Most High and fear him, he'll bless you with a righteous one. 24. A dishonest woman contempt, contemptive uh, shame. But a honest woman will reverence her husband. So that's how we know if a woman is a righteous or wicked if she will honor and reverence her husband. Verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. And we know that a dog is a bitch. Okay. A woman that honor her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonor him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. A loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought of to drive away the enemies. <laughs> there be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffers poverty, and a man of understanding that are not set by and one that returned from righteousness to sin. The Lord prepared such and one uh, for the sword. A merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong, and a huckster shall not be free from sin. All right, come on. All right, you wanna read this? What we're going to do now is we're going to show you that the feminist movement actually was superimposed on you through slavery. Uh, the, this feminist movement that so many of us is carrying on with that is against uh, the so-called black and Hispanic man has been amongst us since the Willie Lynch letter. And you can go and you can go and print out the letters for yourself and see for yourself instead of take our words because it actually started in slavery. Since since we got off the damn shit. The Willie Lynch letter, the making of a slave. I greet you here on the bank of the James River in the year of our Lord, 1712. First I shall thank ye, the gentlemen 
of the colony of Virginia for bringing me here. I'm here to help you solve some of your problems with slaves. Your invitation reached me on my modest plantation in the West Indies, where I have experimented with some of the newest and still the oldest methods for control of slaves. Ancient Rome's would envy us in if my program is implemented. As our boat sailed south of the James River, named for our illustrious king, whose version of the Bible we cherish, I saw enough to know that your problem is not unique. While Rome used cords of wood as crosses for standing human bodies along its highways in great numbers, you are here using the tree and the rope on occasions. I caught the whip of a dead body slain hanging from a tree. A couple miles back, you are not only losing valuable stock by hangings, you are having uprisings. Slaves are running away, your crops are sometimes left in the field too long for maximum profit, you suffer occasional fires, your animals are killed. Gentlemen, you know, you know what your problems are. I do not need to elaborate. I am not here to enumerate your problems. I am here to introduce you to a method of solving them. And Slocky, we know that the Willie Lynch letter is the crafty counsel that the Bible speaks of. Crafty counsel to oppress our people for hundreds of years. Okay. In my bag here, I had a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for the least for at least 300 years. And Con, we're, we're definitely feeling these effects today of how they uh, divide us and break up families so that we don't trust or depend on each other. My method is simple. Any member of your family, of your overseer, can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves and make the differences bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control. These methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies, and it will work throughout the South. So that's not like a three-point plan then, so they use fear, distrust, and envy amongst each other for control. Take this simple little list of differences and think about them. On top of my list is age, but it's there only because it starts with an A. The second is color or shade. There is intelligence, size, sex, size of plantations, and status on plantations. Attitude of owners, whether the slaves live in the valley, on a hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or is tall or short. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action. Hey Slogan, let me uh, say this too. We gotta get rid of this um, Willie Lynch mentality of the truth when we uh, have the Northern Kingdom brother sitting here chopping up. We have people commenting our videos saying, hey, that, that's a heathen, that's a Gentile. We gotta cut this Willie Lynch um, spirit out of us in, in the truth. Okay. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust and envy stronger than adulation. Respect or, respect or admiration, the black slaves after receiving this indoctrination shall carry on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male. And, they, and, and the young black male against the old black male. Let me bring out Deuteronomy 28, uh, 54 real quick. Deuteronomy um, 28, 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother. 
and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children which he shall lead. So they um, help um, push these curses upon us where we um, don't respect our elders. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male and the young male against the old black male. You must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves and the light-skinned slaves versus the dark-skinned slaves. You must use the female, the female, the female versus the male and the male versus the female. You must also have you white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. It is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. So they depend and trust the most high? They must love, respect, and trust only us. The white man. Gentlemen, these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensely for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful of each other. And when I, I don't know about you, but I definitely feel the effects today where we, um, as people, don't trust each other. We don't support each other. We don't have each other's backs. That's right, it's dark skin slave versus light skin slave right now. Like the brother just said, we got uh, black versus Spanish because you don't want to accept them as Israel with your foolishness. When it already showed you that they mixed amongst the Gentiles in Ezra, that it was going to happen, and it has happened. But y'all want to stay stuck on stupid. And we on the streets trying to tell you that um, you're Hebrew is alive, you're um, the chosen people of the book, and a lot of you guys don't, don't believe us because um, because it's me and Yaka and I bring it out, but if a white person told you that, then you'll believe it. You need Cut. a white person to validate it over your own brother. Uh, third paragraph to Willie Lynch letter. Let us make a slave. What do we need? First of all, we need a black nigger man, a pregnant nigger woman, and her baby nigger boy. Second, we will use the same basic principle that we use in breaking a horse, combined with some more sustaining factors. What we do with horses is that we break them from one form of life to another. That is, we reduce them from their natural state in nature. Whereas nature provides them with the natural capacity to take care of their offspring, we break that natural string of independence from them and thereby create a dependency status so that we may be able to get from uh, them useful reproduction for our business and pleasure. And so like I want to say that um, a nigger is a product of America. We did not have that nigger mentality when we was in West Africa. Can. We, we used to um, live in upright, um, nearly uh, righteous lives, um, living a Torah-based um, life. But we respected each other, we had each other's backs, but now America has created a nigger which is a broken down um, black male or female, which is um, conformed to this American society. Okay, and, and they say, uh, first, uh, to destroy a uh, strong man's goods, you, you must first tie up that strong man. That's the Willie Lynch mentality right there. That's, th that's them taking the, uh, the male out of the equation and them using us for the business. The business not only for our cheap and slave labor, but the business to fuel their prison systems. As yeah, so a woman, you need to see that we're trying to show you that the enemy is using you to uh, destroy your nations. Okay, to, to use the school, the prison funnel. Right, a righteous woman build up upper house, a wicked woman destroys it. Okay, to make merchandise of the children of Israel. You're gonna bring out that Mark 3, 27? Yeah, bring it up. All right, this is Mark chapter three, verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. Okay. And that's what they're doing. They're using the black woman to weaponize you against the black man. Because men are more logical thinkers by nature and women are emotional. They get um, 
distress and out of um, order over the simplest things I like a man. We're always thinking, trying to think of um, plotting and think real men do or thinkers of how we can um, make the situation better. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read from the Willie Lynch letter. Uh, the fourth paragraph. Therefore, if you break the female mother, she will break the offspring. In the early years of development, and when the offspring is old enough to work, she will deliver it up to you. For her normal female protective tendencies will have been lost in the original breaking process. For example, take the case of the wild stud horse, a female horse, and an already infant horse and compare the breaking process with two captured nigger males in their natural state. A pregnant nigger woman with her infant offspring take the stud horse, break him for a limited containment, completely break the female horse until she becomes very gentle whereas you or anybody can ride her in her comfort. Slock you. Now in doing so, they doing the same thing today by breaking the female, by keeping the man out of the house, by giving her everything with the welfare system. By breaking her, by her repeating the cycle, showing her daughter, look, you don't need a man in the house because Esau and the government is gonna give us everything that we need to sustain a household. Not to upbring uh, uh, the household, but just to sustain the household, and that's where we wrong too. Our women don't realize that's the only thing you're doing is sustaining the household. You're not raising the children. Because it takes a man and a woman to raise the children. Absolutely. Yeah, wise women would um, use those resources and benefits that she's giving and, and use it to support the household with her man. Not kick her man out so she can have all the power control to herself. Take the meanest and most relentless nigger, strip him of his clothes in front of the remaining male niggers the female and the nigger infant. Tar and feather him. Tie each leg to a different horse, facing opposition, direct opposite directions, set him a fire, and beat both horses to pull him apart in front of the remaining nigger. The next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining nigger male to the point of death in front of the female and the infant. Don't kill him, but put the fear of God in him, for he can be useful for future breeding. Did this Bible prophecy of Deuteronomy 28, 49, uh, wait, yeah, 49 to 50 says, uh, Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly. This is a prophecy about um, our captivity in America. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shall favor to the young. So the, so the Bible prophesied that this would happen to a people where they'll be under captivity to a wicked, fierce nation that don't regard your life or care about you at all. Wouldn't respect the old or young and use our women against us. And is willing to split a brother in half to make an example of him to put instill fear into the rest of the people for um, generations. That's wicked. The Willie Lynch letter, Making of a Slave, paragraph five, the breaking process of the so-called African woman. Take the woman and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. So the woman is the most important factor. Take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. We have, re we have reversed the relationship in her natural uncivilized state. She would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized uh, nigger male and she would have limited protective tendencies toward her independent male offspring and would raise male offsprings to be dependent like her. Um, keep bring out the book of Isaiah, chapter three, verse 12. All right, Isaiah chapter three, verse 12, coming right up. Isaiah three twelve says, as for my people, children are their oppressors and woman 
rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. So the way that we've been led in our path is, is since slavery, you know, and it's going on to this day. And we got women rule, single uh, women ruling the household uh, through this feminist movement who thinks they don't need a man to teach a man how to be a man. Then we also got these effeminized uh, men growing up who think the only way uh, to solve or resolve a situation is with a gun. Or we got these effeminate men who want to be women because there's no man to show them how to be a man through this movement right here. Another thing that's happened is a lot of um, child molestations also because you don't got a strong man in the house because now um, one of the women after they kick one man out of the house, they're um, went to the clubs and bringing up uh, Tyrone, Leroy, or different men home every night and they end up um, lusting over, over the daughter they were uh, raped and molester also. So there's a lot of um, child molestations when our community and uh, tricking boys out and making them turn into um, homosexuals because these nasty guys are raping boys and girls. So you, you cause a lot of problems when you're uh, committing being promiscuous. Okay. Uh, the Willie Lynch letter, Making of a Slave, The Breaking Process, uh, still in the first paragraph. With the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. In this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offspring in reversed roles. For fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent, uh, but physically strong. Yeah. And that's sad. It, let, let me bring it. Let me bring out that sentence again. Sentence again. That's sad. That's sad. With, with the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. In uh, this frozen psychological state of independence. She will raise her male and female offspring in reverse roles. And that's happening right now. We got these hypermasculine females. We got these women out there dressing like dudes. You got people like young M.A. You got these young thugs growing up looking all crazy and feminine. What's that young, young Yachty or whatever the hell his name is? And that's plastic across the screen and it's taught that it's okay. Cause the, cause the roles are reversed. And you see um, generations of families of women that are single mothers that got no man in the household at all. They just, um, just um, females um, being the head of the families for generations, which is totally sad and out of order. I want to bring out the book of Romans, chapter one. All right, Romans. And we're going to pick it up in verse 25. All right, Romans chapter verse 25 it is. Uh, Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 25. All right. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who was blessed forever, I mean. For this called Yahweh gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Me. And this is New Testament also. So uh, the, the Yahweh of the Old Testament just does not change the same in the New Testament. Verse 28. And even as they did, like we did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And we've been given over to the reprobate mind because of this captivity that we're going through, which has pushed this feminist movement upon us because we decided that we don't want to keep the laws of the Most High. We need to go back 
to this to the proper order. And we need you women to step up with us. And we need you to play the role that you was meant to play. Instead of trying to be the man. Instead of trying to wear pants in the in the relationship. From there, we're gonna to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold pearls, gold or pearls or costly array. So it's like quit being materialistic one. Spending money on them, um, all kinds of clothes that you don't need and having 100 pairs of shoes. 100 pairs of shoes that you can go to the club and be a whore with. Or what do you need a $500 shopping, shopping bag or purse for when you've got um, only $200 in the bank account? And children at home that need food. Man, it's high time, Israel. And women, this is a lesson that needed to be done. Let me bring out verse 15 also. Go ahead, bring it up. So notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbear, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Okay. So that, that's your lot of life of childbearing. So quit um, going to get abortions. Okay. Like I said, we're building a nation. And this feminist movement, black woman, Hispanic movement, this is not for you. It never had you in mind at all. None of y'all was Susan B. Anthony. The black man, Hispanic man, ain't never been oppressing you. We love all women. We loved our women besides before we integrated. We taught you to love each other. Even in the 60s, we had pictures of Pam Gray with the Afro up there. Now a lot of the self-hate comes from self. Y'all got blonde hair and y'all got weave. And y'all put weave in your head and sacrifice the false idols, putting demons on yourself, make you more hyper-masculine. Cause you getting drunk and putting spirits in your body, calling yourself diva. And you got butt implants to make yourself look like an ant with a big butt and uh, in proportion legs. You look like a joke now, some of you ladies. Uh, that's way out there. It makes no sense. So the point is, black woman, yo, all we got is us and the most high. Go back to the natural order that he set up from the beginning. That's why we went to Genesis first. Uh -huh. He set this order up from the beginning. And anything outside of that order is going to be chaos. Yeah, the Bible, this, this is your power of uh, black sister, Hispanic sister, Native American sister. This is your power keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. Okay. And the most high one got you. And those that are scattered to the four corners of the globe that these curses is fitting and that's going through the same things that's going that we going through. This is this is where we went off. This shows us where we went off, and this is what we need to go back to. I hope this was an awakening to some of y'all sisters. We ain't trying to bash you, we really ain't. This is all love and rebuke. We gotta get back to being the pro-black, pro-Hispanic family. We got to get back to that order so our children can see that that order needs to be restored. Instead of having these effeminate men being raised by the woman. Matter of fact, bring out 2nd uh, Ezra 5 and 8. Second right. Ezra chapter 5 verse 8. It says, um, there should be a confusion, it's like, there should be confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be off sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and mistress women shall bring forth monsters. And without, without, without us bringing back that structure, that's exactly what we're doing. We're producing monsters. We got uh, our, our daughters who are taking these uh, hormones, which is really, really witchcraft. It's witchcraft. And um, they trying to look like a man. You know, so without these spells that you cast on yourself, there's no way that you're gonna look more and more like a man. You trying to grow hair on your face. You got these men 
taking uh, estrogen pills, trying to look like a woman. What's wrong with you? You a man. No matter how many of these pills you take, you still gonna be a man. America's, America's witchcraft has done, took its toll on our people. And we need to come out of it and be separate. And be separate is us being separate from the other people by doing what the Most High has asked us to do. You know? It's high time, y'all. And it's time to go back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. And it's time for us to teach our women how to be women and the men how to be men. And it's time for us to allow that, our, our sisters to allow that man, that righteous man in the household, so that he can be had over his family. Uh -huh. Now we love y'all, yo. We ain't trying to, we ain't even attacking you sisters who's in the feminist movement. We attacking the feminist movement. Because when it was come to fruition, it had nothing absolutely to do with it. And it's all love. Got anything else you want to add, brother? Oh, no, we, we said play. All right. And um, you'll see us weekly daily at, uh, on Rise of Chosen, Truth Beyond the Surface Temple, uh, Judah Knights of Israel. And um, you can look us up on the Ox... Uh, on, on, on the Ox uh, channel, Mikael7. I want to give a shout out uh, to Brother Daniel uh, Shamawa Israel, uh, the, the Israelites of Smyrna. Uh, we want to give a shout out uh, to the Torah Lakam, uh, Brother Desmond Honeycutt, Moshe Ben Israel, Moshe. Brother Dan Yala, Yazar Adderall, Priest, what's up? <clears throat> uh, Brother uh, Corey, Corey uh, Judah Boyer. And um, King Chuck. And um, with that, we'll say Shabbat Shalom to y'all. And if y'all have any questions, hit us up. You know, we, we're willing to answer questions. And, um, you know, we'd like to ask you uh, to share the videos because, like, when we, we've been sharing the videos, to be honest with you, they've been blocking and censoring us from sharing so many groups and so on and so forth. I've been putting Facebook jail a couple of times because they ain't liking the content of this truth that we spread them, but it must get out, huh. you know? So we ask you all to help us get this word out and share this uh, to as many uh, pages as you can in yourself. Uh, shout out to the brother John Wayne, you know? And um, with that, we'll say Shalom. All right, also Passover is coming up soon also. Oh yeah, Passover is coming up soon. So yeah, happy Passover to all of y'all and hope y'all getting prepared for all that, you know? And peace to all the family, you know. Shalom, malikum to the mishpaka. Shalom. Kumi Ashrala. God Ashrala. Kumi Ashrala. God Ashrala. Kumi Ashrala. God Ashrala. Peace and blessings to each and every last one of y'all. Shalom. Shalom.